The Logitech G502 is arguably one of the best gaming mice ever made. And to this day, the G502 Hero is still the number one most sold gaming mouse on Amazon. And it has been so popular that competing brands have even tried to copy its unique shape and design. So now, years later, a successor to the rich and long legacy is born. Can the G502X line take the crown? Or will they fall into obscurity? Let's find out. What's up guys, my name is Nick and welcome back to Tectacular. We're going to be checking out the brand new G502X and X Plus gaming mice from Logitech. And we're going to be deep diving these mice to ensure that you have all the information to help you with the purchase decision and see if these mice are for you. Now, full disclosure, Logitech ANZ did provide me with the mice for this review. However, all thoughts and opinions are my own. As a long-time user of the G502 and 502 Lightspeed, the announcement left me very excited, but also a little bit skeptical. Now, G502 was not without flaws, but with a bar so high, how do they keep what we loved about the mouse, but improve what we didn't? Thankfully, the moment I gripped these mice, my worries melted away as quickly as my hand melted into place from the familiar shape. But before we get to that, let's see what's in the box. Being a wired mouse, the G502X wired doesn't really come with anything apart from its environmentally friendly packaging and the DPI shift cover. More on this later. But as for the G502X Plus, you get the low profile wireless dongle for light speed, USB-C charging cable, DPI shift cover, and the USB-C to A adapter. My perfect world of USB-C only gets closer by the day. For this review, I'll be doing all my comparisons to the G502 Lightspeed, as it's basically the same as all previous models, bar a couple of grams of weight difference, and of course, the two original releases don't use the Hero sensor. So all my comparisons will apply to all four previous models. The G502X and X Plus are mostly the same, except that the 502X is wired, not wireless, so therefore it's a lot lighter, and it doesn't have any RGB. Gotta get the X Plus for the pretty lights. Battery life is also pretty impressive. Logitech claims up to 37 hours of constant game time with RGB on. And if you turn the lights off, you can expect up to 130 hours, which is not too shabby. Side by side, the new mice look strikingly different to the original G502 design, but you can still see the roots of the G502 in the X models. Logitech are launching both of the new models in black and white, and both colorways look really great. They've flattened the palm area slightly, which actually makes the X models feel a little more comfortable while still keeping the same overall feel and shape. Gone are the pointy edges of the old G502 design, which made it look like it had fangs instead of buttons. The surface has a smooth matte texture with the rubber side grips being redesigned and integrated more seamlessly with the shape. The scroll wheel is now mostly plastic with a nice rubber ring that feels a lot more usable and a lot more tactile compared to the heavy metal scroll wheel on the OG502, which sounded more like a plane that was about to take off. I mean, just look at this. However, the new scroll wheel does, of course, still feature hyper scroll, so big thumbs up on the scroll wheel there. Logitech have removed the RGB from the iconic G logo and instead created this almost X-like shape on the back of the mouse, which houses eight customizable RGB zones. It gives the mouse quite a striking design that I actually really like a lot. I did have concerns about the placement of the RGB as it's actually indented into the mouse shell, um, but after using it, I really didn't have any issues with it. There was no discomfort at all. And after a few days, I didn't even notice the feeling of the indent from the RGB zones. While you still get 13 programmable buttons, Logitech have changed the size of pretty much all of them. For starters, the back button on the side of the mouse is now larger and matches the size of the forward button, so it's easier to hit. And the G6 and 7 buttons, you know, those long skinny ones next to your left click. Those are now larger and easier to click as well. But by far, the biggest change comes to the G shift button, which commonly known as the sniper button. This button is now reversible and removable. So it's much more accommodating to different hand sizes and for anyone who prefers to not have it at all, which is where the previously shown DPI cover comes in. So you can just remove it and then use the mouse like the button just never existed. This is 
fantastic. I struggled to hit the sniper button on the G502 Lightspeed and obviously previous models as well. So having this extra extension on the new button is uh, such a welcome addition. Like I find myself using it a lot more and it's just a lot easier. So I am training myself to use it in those high pressure situations where I need that increased sensitivity. And uh, also the finish on this sniper button is different. Um, it's got a matte sort of textured finish compared to the glossy finish of the other buttons. The DPI indicator and G9 programmable button is where things stop being an improvement. On previous 502 models, you could determine which sensitivity you were switching to based on which lights were on, and it was located on the side of the mouse. However, on the X models, the DPI indicator has moved to the very front of the mouse, which makes no sense, as the only way to see which sensitivity you were changing to on the fly is by lifting the mouse up. This is the one thing that feels like a bit of a regression in design. At least with the X Plus, the RGB zones extend to the side of the mouse, so at a glance, when you're changing sensitivity, you can exactly and clearly see what color you are changing to. But with the X Wide, you don't have that luxury. You have to lift up the mouse and look to see what you're changing to. So it just feels a little bit clumsy the way that this has been done. This issue only affects the X Wide, and while it may seem minor, it was important to note as the location of the indicator just seems like a massive oversight. As for the G9 programmable button though, which is located underneath the hyper scroll toggle button, I accidentally hit this button a lot. Sometimes when I reach over to grip the mouse, I end up accidentally hitting the button and therefore changing the DPI because that's what I had it set to. So then I need to hit the button another four times to get back to my desired DPI. While the button is placed between your uh, index finger and middle finger, the force required to click the button is just too little. And I couldn't understand at first why I kept accidentally hitting this button because I never had this issue with previous G502s, and then I had a closer look at both of the mice side by side and realized that on the previous 502 models, the area where the hyper scroll and the G9 button are located are actually indented. So they're actually lower, uh, slightly lower compared to the rest of the mouse's shell and the, uh, the left and right clicks. So therefore, you weren't going to be hitting that button accidentally. But with the new X model's design, everything is all flush and at the same level, so the button is raised a lot higher. So you'll find yourself accidentally hitting that button at times when you really don't want to. Now, this issue isn't a major one, but it happened often enough that it was really frustrating and I needed to point it out. And I would have loved if Logitech had moved the location of this button to somewhere else. Either they split the G7 button in half and split that into two buttons, or if they move the button underneath the forward and back buttons, therefore having it away from the center of the mouse, you won't accidentally hit it, but also they give you an extra button that's a lot easier to hit. So therefore you can actually map it to something more useful for your games. Now let's flip this pancake and see what's underneath. The X models use the same high quality hero sensor that was present in the G502 hero and light speed models of the mouse. It's an excellent sensor that can reach up to 25,600 100 dpi i don't know why you'd need to go that high but it's cool that you can if you wanna both models also feature the nice and ultra smooth ptfe feet that we know and love but the biggest change that comes with these mice is the brand new optical mechanical switches that are launching in these mice that logitech have dubbed light force these Light Force switches benefit from the speed and accuracy of an optical switch while keeping the feeling and tactile feedback of a mechanical switch. And the back of the switch is where the optical mechanism lives. A laser is shot through an opening to a sensor on the other side. The moment you push down to click, it breaks the connection, instantly sending a signal that the key has been pushed. This leaves the front of the switch to house the mechanical mechanism to give that wonderful tactile feedback. Also, I just want to say I love the name Light Force. Like, you can tell they've had this in the works for a long time. The marketing department was right on the ball because you have the light speed wireless technology and now the Light Force switches because you have to apply force to a button. Like, it's clever. I just, I got to give it to them. It's taken some time to adjust to these new switches. Like, they are that responsive to the point where I've been pre-clicking a lot of my clicks. And it's a good thing that I need to retrain my muscle memory because... Clearly, I was so adjusted to the slower mechanical switches of the older mice. So overall, these switches are absolutely incredible. Plus, with this new optical mechanical switch, there is no chance of double clicking issues appearing as they commonly did on the OG models of the 502. And I was one of those people that had that issue on two different mice. It was 
awful. I think it also plagued the G502 Hero in some instances as well. And paired with their light speed wireless technology on the X Plus model, these mice firmly plant themselves as some of the highest performing gaming mice on the market. Okay, let's talk about weight. Now, the original G502s were notorious for being a heavy mouse, and they came with extra additional weights if you wanted it even heavier. These things already weighed 121 grams, and you, you, they give you a extra weight to make it heavier. It's like, what? Why? I don't want to move around a dumbbell on my desk. But thankfully, Logitech have put the G502 on a treadmill, and they've shaved off a heap of weight. The X Plus weighs in at 107 grams, while the X Wide weighs in at just 89 grams. These are huge weight savings uh, due to the redesign of the internal structure of the mouse. And honestly, it is absolutely brilliant. And 89 grams for the G502X Wide puts it in firing range of some of the lightest mouse on the market, which usually hover between 67 and 70 grams. Okay, so these new mice are lighter and they have these awesome new switches, but how do they actually perform and how does it all feel? I wanted to see how much of a difference these new mice could make to someone who's been used to the weight and shape of the G502 for basically the last eight years. And I booted up AimLab and we are testing on the exercise grid shot ultimate. I test the new X mice models against the G502 Lightspeed and I've also added the G Pro Superlight into the mix for a bit of spice. Each mouse will get five warm-up rounds, so that way I can get used to each mouse's weight and shape and also dial in the sensitivity to my liking. All of these will come together to ensure I am getting the best performance out of that mouse and we can accurately compare the results. The sensitivity I set alone for the G502 is 800 dpi, whereas the X model mice and the Superlight, I settled on 500 dpi. And there are going to be four variables that we're going to be focusing on from the Grid Shot Ultimate Test. The first is accuracy, which is self-explanatory. We have kill total, which is how many targets I was able to shoot total in the test. Kills per second is how many targets I could eliminate in a one second period. And time to kill is how quickly I reacted between targets. And this is measured in milliseconds. Starting with the G502 Lightspeed versus the X Plus, my original score is pretty good, but when compared to the X Plus, it is quite the difference. I had a 4% increase to my accuracy. I was 33 milliseconds faster at reacting, which led to a higher amount of targets that were shot and I was able to shoot more of them in shorter bursts. Very quickly in the warm-ups, I felt like I had more control with the X Plus, and it was very surprising to me how quickly that feeling came on, and that's probably due to the shape being slightly more refined, but still very, very similar to what I've been using all this time, and the results really echo that as well. And the feelings of increased control only continued with the X Wired. My accuracy stayed mostly the same, but I was a little slower and shot less targets. However, still a noticeable jump over the 502 Lightspeed. This result tells me that I could probably uh, drop the sensitivity further to like even 400 or 300 to compensate for the even lighter weight and therefore boost my accuracy and performance overall. The G Superlight is a little bit of an interesting one though. I was just slightly slower than the X Plus, but my accuracy climbed to 97%. And this ties in with the goal of ultra lightweight mice, where they want to make you feel like the cursor is tied to your actual hand's movements, rather than the cursor being tied to the movements of an object your hand is moving. Now, to eliminate practice bias of grid shot ultimate, I looked back to the 502 light speed and dropped my sensitivity to 500 to see if I would perform better or the same, given all the practice I've done and the results of the previous mice. And as it turns out, I only had a 1% increase across the board and only 7 milliseconds of improvement to my reaction time. If you're new to the Logitech ecosystem, Logitech G Hub is the place where you make all your adjustments and customizations for your Logitech peripherals. And it's definitely one of the better ones out there compared to competing brands. This one is easy to use and also doesn't hog resources. But one feature that's been popping up in all of these peripheral uh, control softwares is the ability to make your own custom animated lighting profiles. While adjusting sensitivity, assigning macros, and doing some basic lighting changes is very user-friendly, the custom animation creator in G-Hub is what really requires a lot of work. It's very basic, it's a bit annoying to use at times, and you can't even select multiple frames in the animation timeline. But once I figured out the kinks of the interface, I managed to create this simple cycling effect between orange and blue. I was pretty happy with how it turned out, and I managed to nail that gentle fade between the colors as well. You can actually download this lighting profile through the community tab in G-Hub too. Just search G502X Plus and Tacular.
So I've been talking pretty positively about these X model mice, but as all things do, it comes down to the price. And the X Plus retails for 279 AUD, and it's the same launch price as the 502 Lightspeed back when it launched in 2019. So the fact that it's kept the same price uh, for the same, you know, for the improvement of the same model, very, very cool to see. And this price does squarely pin it as a high quality premium mouse, but so was the 502 Lightspeed to this day, still seen as a high quality premium mouse. However, of course, that has dropped in price since it's been out to around 180 to 250 Australian. But if you compare the lowest price seen of 180 to the X Plus, I definitely think there's more than $90 worth of improvements in the X Plus. However, the G502X Wide is where things get really interesting, and it's launching at 149 Australian, which mostly lines up with the launch of the G502 Hero, apart from a couple of outliers which launched it at 129. But the X Wide is meant to directly replace the G502 Hero. And Logitech knows that one of the big selling points, of course, with the Hero was not only the fact that it was a great mouse, but of course its price and how cheap you could pick it up. So they are putting the launch price down to $109 Australian, which is only $10 more than what the G502 Hero is currently retailing as. I mean, this is for Australia, of course, but similar sentiments around the world as well. So this is wild. Logitech want everyone to know, who everyone who has a G502 Hero or a Lightspeed, they really want you to upgrade to the new mouse and they've made it only $10 more. $109, yeah, it's still, still, a, still quite a bit of money. But the fact there's only $10 more, anyone who's looking at a prospective G502 Hero surely will be swayed by the newer model that's only $10 more. So should you buy them? If you're on the market for a new mouse or you can afford to upgrade, absolutely. They make their predecessors completely obsolete. They improve on them in almost every way. These mice are by far some of the best on the market now. The X-Wide is perfect for competitive gamers who want a super lightweight mouse, but also want a shape that is much more comfortable. And in terms of weight versus size and the shape, the X-Wide, I think, takes the crown here. But you really, if you really want that wireless functionality and, of course, the pretty lights of the RGB, then, of course, the X Plus will still be a delight. You just have to shell out a few extra dollars. And look, even though the X Plus is a little heavier, of course, it's still much lighter than the 502 Lightspeed, and I'll still get still able to get some really great performance out of it as well. I think both these mice are absolutely worth upgrading to, especially the X Wide, given how cheap it currently is. So if you can afford it and you are kind of looking for a new mouse, the X Wide is pretty much a no-brainer at 109 Australian. So you should definitely jump on it. But of course, shop around for the cheapest price, as you should do with all tech. And the X models are really a start of a new era and design and quality uh, for Logitech. That about wraps it up for today's video. Hopefully it was enjoyable and hopefully the information I provided helped you decide on whether these mice are for you. And if it did, please drop a like. It really does mean a lot and helps this video out too. And of course, if you want to stay tuned for more videos and be notified when they drop, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell. Christmas is right around the corner, and what I would love for Christmas is 50 likes on this video, and I'd love to hit 300 subs by the end of the year. So thank you again for watching. I'm Nick. This is Tectacular. You've been spectacular. See you next time.